Kyiv is to get advanced American rocket systems as a part of a new $700 million military aid package for Ukraine. Washington plans to send high mobility artillery rocket systems known as HIMARS to the war-torn country, with some of them capable of hitting targets up to 300 kilometers away, if equipped with long-range rounds. But Joe Biden says that the U.S. will not give that type of ammunition to Ukraine. We're not going to send to Ukraine rocket systems that can strike into Russia. However, an anonymous official cited by the New York Times said that even from an 80-kilometer distance, Ukrainian forces could still hit Russian territory if firing near the border. The official said that the U.S. would rely on a promise from Kiev that the weaponry would not be used to attack Russia. One senior administration official acknowledged that even the rockets with a 48-mile limit could be used to attack targets inside Russia if the system was brought to the Ukraine-Russia border. But the official said that Ukraine's government had assured the United States that would not happen. Ukraine's President Zelensky has said he would not attack Russian territory, but bordering regions in western Russia have reportedly been attacking by Ukrainian forces in recent weeks. Several people have been killed during shelling of Russian cities, Belgorod and Kursk, near the border, as well as several people wounded in the Russian city of Voronezh. These images purportedly show some of those attacks. For more on this, we can cross live to geopolitical analyst and former U.S. Marine Brian Berletic. Uh, thank you for being with us here on RT International. Um, so what do you think about the U.S. taking Kiev's word that these weapon systems won't be used to attack Russian territory? I think it's just a formality. They know that they're going to. They know they're going to use them against uh, populated civilian areas uh, in Ukraine and uh, the Donbas region, they already are with equipment that the U.S. has already sent them, the U.S. and their allies. So uh, it's just for public consumption, uh, this bad decision that Washington is making. Uh, these are some very powerful weapons. We're already seeing some um, skirmishes on the borders, if you will. Do you think that these new weapon systems will destabilize the situation on Russia's borders particularly? I think they'll be used to terrorize the people of the Russian Federation as well as people within Ukraine's borders, but I don't think it's going to make any difference. It'll take four weeks just to train a basic operator. They operate in batteries that require heavy logistical support, and I just I don't see how this is going to be any different than the M777 howitzers or the javelins or the stingers that have also failed to be the game changers they were promoted as. Now, certainly a lot of uh, speculation going on here, but what do you think? Do you think the U.S. would stop funding Kiev's military if Ukrainian forces do not make significant advances in the conflict over a certain period of time? Is there any chance that this will all just fizzle out? It'll, it'll fizzle out when there's no one left to pick up U.S. weapons sent there. It's a lot like the, the proxy war the U.S. is waging in Syria. Uh, it, it didn't change until the, the facts on the ground, on the battlefield, were changed in Syria's favor and, and left the U.S. and its allies in a stalemate. I, I think the, the very same situation is going to play out in Ukraine. All right, Brian, I'm going to ask you, get down to brass tacks, if you will. What is America's interest in the region? I mean, why is the U.S. right now spending so much money to help Kiev's military? The U.S. has made no secret over many decades, as a matter of fact, that they will not tolerate a peer or near peer competitor. This is all about preventing the reemergence of Russia as a global power and stopping the rise of China. And the fates of Russia and China are linked. And we can see the U.S. antagonizing both nations on multiple fronts. And Ukraine is just among uh, the many. All right. Interesting to hear your thoughts. Brian Berletic, geopolitical analyst and former U.S. Marine with unique perspective on the subject. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you.